Hey, 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 and welcome to this edition of Office Hours with Lenora. For those of you that don't know, Office Hours with Lenora serves three points. The very first point is for anyone seeking to learn about their options to becoming licensed as a real estate professional to help them with that. The second point is for someone that may have started already a pre-licensing course, passed that course on a first attempt. And the third point of office hours with Lenora is for anyone who has begun um, a career as a real estate professional to stay in the industry. So on this episode of office hours with Lenora, I want to uh, give you some information about wholesaling, wholesaling 101 why a broker's license is required in Illinois, in the state of Illinois to be exact, okay? So let's begin with um, what is wholesaling? Because for some, it might be a new term that they're hearing, um, but for others, it may be just something that they've known about for a few years or so now. But I'm gonna, you know, I take really good notes and I don't wanna miss anything because the biggest thing that I want you to take away for, uh, from this live about wholesaling is regulation, understanding where the law is and the effect of the law and licensure on wholesaling. So I'm going to read some of this from my notes. What is real estate wholesaling? Real estate wholesaling is a short term strategy that investors use to make big bucks, to make profits. Okay. A wholesaler can make a profit by identifying the property being sold for under market value. Usually it's called a distressed property. Okay. Making an agreement with the seller of that distressed property and assigning the purchase contract to another buyer. So let me give you an example. I want you to think of look for three things. Okay. I'm going to use three different pens here. I'm going to get three different colors so that it all makes sense. Pen number one is the seller, okay? Pen number two, the blue pen, uh, purple pen seller, blue pen is the wholesaler. And the red pen is the buyer, okay? So to begin, the wholesaler will approach the seller who may have a distressed property and that seller and the wholesaler can agree or have terms that the wholesaler is going to bring a buyer to with a contract to purchase the seller's property. Now, the seller and the wholesaler are going to agree, they're going to look at the numbers to determine, hey, seller owes or $90,000 will get this seller get this get this home or distressed property out of this seller's name, no more responsibility for that property. So they can agree that I'll just use a whole number that this is this is fictional. None of this is real. Seller says, give me $90,000. I'm done. I'm walking away from this. Find me a buyer. Wholesaler may say, okay, I'm going to write the contract with my with my buyer for $100,000. Seller needs 90. Wholesaler is going to find someone to offer $100,000. Here comes the buyer with that $100,000, usually in cash. The buyer with that $100,000 closed the deal. Everybody's happy. $10,000 is left on the table. Who do you think that $10,000 goes to? That's right. So I want you to also consider, because I don't want people to interchange the term flipping with wholesaling. They actually mean two different things. And originally, anytime you resold a property immediately, like less than 30 days or something like that, it was automatically called flipping. However, a few unscrupulous investors, you're just going to say, you know, they weren't doing all the ethical and right things. They gave flipping such a bad name that some creative real estate professionals coined the title wholesaling to distance themselves from those unscrupulous investors. 
Um, they didn't want any negative connotation to the word flipping. So then came along some popular television shows. We won't mention the names of those shows, but they made the process of wholesaling and flipping different and brought it to the mainstream. So now flipping refers to buying, fixing up or renovating, and then reselling a prop property, whereas wholesaling refers to a property immediately being sold without fixing, no investment made into that property. It's just property sold, done, okay? Unlike flipping, a real estate wholesaler doesn't do any renovations or additions. So let's talk about what the goals in wholesaling are. It is to sell a home to an interested party under a contract before the contract ends. So I could be um, a wholesaler and my, my seller has given me 30 days to sell said property, to bring them a buyer and close this deal. If I get that transaction done in less than 30 days, that seller will, will pay me um, a fee, a fee. And we'll talk about what that fee is. No money actually exchanges hands between the seller and the wholesaler until the actual transfer of property until the deal is done. Um, how does the wholesaler make their money? They make a profit by finding the buyer willing to purchase the home at a price that is usually marked up to cover whatever that commission is. The difference in price is what's paid by the buyer to the seller and then the seller pays the wholesaler. That property is, that price is what we call a retainer. You'll, you'll, you'll hear it, a retainer. Distressed properties, which you heard me mention before, can be short sales, can be bank REOs, real estate owned um, properties. It can be um, foreclosures. It can also be properties that are abandoned or that need a lot of repairs in a sense. Do you think of any property that has been on the market for a long time and now that seller is motivated to sell that property? It can be it can be sold uh, by doing a wholesale uh, contract. Some of the concerns and issues with wholesaling, it may require two closings because the seller does not trust the wholesaler. I'll let you know right now in the state of Illinois, it's going to be real hard to do two closings. And usually they are called what we call dry closings, meaning no money is exchanging hands until after the properties have closed. So can you imagine doing all of this work, going up, finding the nerves, doing all the research about the properties, who the seller is, and then having a, uh, an agreement with that seller, sometimes a contract, sometimes verbal, saying that I'll bring a buyer to your property. Can you imagine doing all of that, securing the buyer, and then after the properties exchange owners that you don't get paid? Because some wholesalers have gotten burned that way. If the new buyer is getting a loan, that can create a problem too. The two, with the two closings approach. Two closings mean the seller and then the wholesaler, because the wholesaler is not going to buy this property from the seller, have one closing. And now the wholesaler and the buyer have a second closing because the wholesaler is trying to secure their money. Okay. Let's talk about the, the loan because it's a little trickier. Remember I said wholesaling is usually all cash. So this is where you see your investors with, with the dollar dollar bills coming out of their pockets. Usually we'll do more wholesaling contracts than, um, than traditional bank loans. Okay, The two closing approach is difficult when you're doing this in terms of a mortgage from a bank or some form of financial institution. You've got to think of the title company because unfortunately with a bunch of the wholesaling contracts, there, there are some, some marks or we like, to, uh, we like to say in real estate, a cloudy title, meaning that there are some things that should be cleared on that title before it can be exchanged to the new rightful owner, okay? A cloud on a title could be a mechanic's lien. It could be, I've seen clouds on titles from Aronson Furniture. Somebody didn't pay. 
So they put that a lien on their property. Um, so those are some examples of what it could be difficult with trying to get a loan and then, then doing a wholesaling contract. Another thing that might be a problem are the underwriters. When you're in a loan wholesaling type contract, automatically most underwriters are going to reject that because they're not, they don't want to see that assignment or retainer fee on the hood or the closing documents. It, it looks very suspect. It, it's like, what is this for? Because is somebody being paid? for services in the state of Illinois that requires a real estate license. Stick with that. Don't leave it. Okay. The wholesaler will, they, they usually sell again, their properties to cash investors. Wholesalers may try to convince the cash buyers to pay an, an assignment fee right before the closing because they're trying to guarantee they get paid. They're trying to guarantee they get paid because they can't get paid on the hood or that closing document. So they may go to their buyer and say, okay, you got to pay me this $10,000 from my example up front. Mind you, you're giving somebody $10,000 for something you have not secured or rightfully owned as of yet. That wholesaler can run off with your money and you want to be careful about that. I'm sorry, guys. I thought my ringer was off here. Okay, let's talk about why you have to have a real estate broker's license in the state of Illinois if you're going to be doing wholesaling. In August of 2019, the Illinois legislature passed SB 1872, an amendment to the Illinois Real Estate Act of 2000, and Governor Pritzker approved it. Essentially, the amendment states that if you are going to wholesale more than one house one property in Illinois in a 12 month period, you have to be licensed as a real estate broker. No if, ands, or buts about it, people. Is wholesaling in Illinois illegal? Wholesaling in Illinois is not illegal per se, but it is highly restricted. Now, as a licensed real estate professional, I'm on my soapbox for a minute. This is just my opinion, not the opinion of the Chicago Association of Realtors or the Realtors Real Estate School. But definitely you might feel the same way if you're working towards or have earned a real estate license already. You're putting in time, money, sacrificing several different other things to be able to become a licensed real estate professional. You are on an ethical side, adhering to rules and regulations because the goal is to protect the public. That's the reason why real estate professionals are licensed and it's a highly regulatory industry so that we don't damage a family or a seller or a buyer or an individual for our own greed or for our own profit, okay? Why would I be okay with someone who doesn't have the same training as me, doesn't have the experience as me, and not held to the same standards, statutes, rules, regulations as me, plus I've spent time and money to get a license, that they can just do the same thing and earn, in most cases, much more money than me? And if it's a cash transaction, Who's documenting how much you've really earned in a year? Wait for it. That's the reason why it's important that if more than one real estate transaction is done, you have a license because the public is protected. The invested interests of the licensed real estate professionals like myself are protected because we want to not have a bad name in this industry or people look at us as professionals that we believe we are as something other than professional, okay? So the reason why this license, this law was signed or amended, the Real Estate Act of 2000 was amended to make sure that there was an even playing field between the wholesalers as well as the licensed brokers and real estate professionals. Now, if you wanna do more than one transaction, you gotta earn the same license, Sacrifice the same time, 
the same money and get your education and take the exact same test that real estate professionals have to take, especially brokers have to take to do the job that they want to do. Have wholesalers been happy about this? Absolutely not. Would you? <laughs> Would you? So that's the reason why tensions were a little high around 2019, 2020, when a lot of, I was receiving a lot of phone calls from wholesalers because they were happy that they had to take a class to get a license to do something they were already doing. Um, a licensee shall not get paid or compensated. Or let me say it like this. A licensee, a licensee, real estate licensee should not compensate someone that is unlicensed. So that could be a referral fee. That could be a commission. That could be a finder's fee. That could be rebates, discounts, gift cards, gas cards, rent, whatever it is, anything of a monetary value. You can't pay people to say, hey, bring me a seller and I'm going to slash you something. Regulate it. They need to have a license too. It is illegal for a wholesaler to coordinate with a broker. So to, to, to pay them any form of compensation. So if me being licensed, if, if I was able to practice uh, real estate full time and a wholesaler came to me and said, hey, Lenora, I'm just going to slide my buyer over to you. Take care of this transaction for me and I'll give you something on the back end. They can't do that. That wholesaler needs to be licensed. I need to be licensed. And whatever compensation or payment should go through the real estate office that I work for, my sponsoring broker, okay? So that everything is on the up and up. The goal of the amended act is to evaluate the competency of persons engaged in real estate, in the real estate profession, and to regulate they, their activities for the protection of the public. The Illinois Real Estate Act which was amended back in April, uh, back in August of 2019, provides for a $25,000 civil penalty for each, not one, but each offense of the violation. So if you get caught out here, Mr. or Mrs. Wholesaler, and it can be proved that you've done more than one real estate transaction in a year and you are unlicensed, you are you are subjected to or could be subjected to a civil penalty of $25,000 per offense. So let's say that I did five wholesale transactions in a year, okay? And I'm unlicensed. That first wholesale contract, I'm fine. I'm good. I don't need a license. But each contract after that first one, I, out, I now owe the state. $100,000. You could have lost all of your profits by not taking a class that could last two weeks and paying $704. So get licensed. Just get licensed. In my opinion, if you need some help with that, give me a call. I can help you with becoming licensed as a real estate broker and getting the information. So that's what I wanted to share with you about wholesaling 101, 101, I'm like 101, 101. And is it a bad thing? It depends on how you look at it. Your opinion matters to you. My opinion matters to me. I am happy that we all have to be licensed as a real estate broker in order to serve the public. So that's my description, my spin on why you need a real estate license to do wholesaling, 101 in Illinois. If you have any other questions, feel free to share those below. Um, if you need more information about upcoming classes, I'll provide that in the blurb up above. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving. So I know that we all should have something to be thankful for. I'm thankful for you joining me here today, all this year and the months ahead, you know, um, on this episode of Office Hours with Lenora. So that's all I have for now. Ta-ta for now. See you soon. Enjoy your holiday. If you are fully vaccinated, enjoy this time with your family. If you're not, think about getting a vaccination. It's important. As well as make sure that you are always socially distancing, okay? I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.